For the entirety of the time that I've owned this BMW, there has been one constant, one thing that's always been there, my constant companion, the check engine light. But today we're gonna make that go away, hopefully for good. And there's two things we're gonna do to make that happen. The first one is we're gonna tune out the codes that can be tuned out because there are a couple codes that are due to equipment missing on this car, like it has no cats, has no secondary air injection. And we're gonna replace my bad bank 202 sensor. So the codes that I'm getting are PO420 and PO430, which is catalyst efficiency issues on banks one and two. And that makes sense because there is no catalyst. So it is probably not being super efficient. It happened. I also have codes for my secondary air injection system, which makes sense because it's not there. And then I have a code for my second bank running lean. And the reason for that, as near as I can tell, is if you remember back to when I relocated the O2 bung on this header, or rather my friend did, I just went to the junkyard and got an O2 sensor out of a BMW uh, 325i there. It was a later model 325i, like an 04 and 05. Still an E46 though. Uh, the engine was missing, so I didn't realize that it was from an M52 TBU or whatever, the uh, sort of California emissions model. And apparently those have slightly different O2 sensors, which is why I had to crimp a different connector on there to make it work in here and uh it's not reading the same so brand new bosch boy wideband o2 sensor or wideband air fuel ratio sensor this was a hundred dollars off of fcp euro and so we'll just throw that in there and all will be good thankfully with my o2 sensor relocation they're very very easy to get to from the bottom so i've got the car jacked up uh let's just throw this in there and uh and, and get this done before we move on to tuning the car Got the old sensor unplugged here and the wire snaked back down to where the old sensor is. You can't really see it from the top. It's right back there just behind the tip of my flashlight, just behind that bend in the header. I got the uh, wire routed back down there so that I can get to it. And then underneath, luckily we can actually get a wrench on this. So I'm just gonna use a 22 mil there to get her undone. And uh, then we can get it out and slap the new guy in. There is our man right there looking real nice in that shiny new bung. And you can see it's still kind of close to the firewall, but it's not touching. So it's all good. I got the wrench on there and broke it loose already. So now I just gotta reach up and unscrew it and then screw the new one in. It really doesn't get much easier than that. And then just fish the wire. Ooh, that's gonna kind of suck fishing that wire back up there. But once that's done, we will be good to go. As you can see, the uh, secondary O2s are not having a good time, but they don't do anything anyway, so I don't think it's a problem. There it is, our shiny new O2 sensor. Neat. Got her snug down with the big wrench, then went fishing with some old wire and got our boy right back up here. So that'll plug in right back there. Normally those plugs are supposed to snap into these holers, but since I've got headers, it moves the position of the oxygen sensors and the uh, wires no longer reach. So just kinda ignore that. Now comes the fun part for which I'm sitting on my uh, porch swing with my laptop because it's a lot more comfortable. For this, you're gonna need to spend some money. I already spent $100 on the O2 sensor. Now it's time to spend $250 on, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher this name, Renovello Byte Tuner. And massive thanks to the developer of this software, not because he sponsored me or anything, he didn't, I paid for this with my own money, but because this is a one-man army. This is a one-man operation that developed this tuning software for most MS4X series DMEs. And it's pretty great software at a ridiculously good price compared to other stuff, and it's actually compatible with Windows 10, so you don't have to go on eBay and buy some garbage old Windows XP laptop just to run your tuning software. Imagine that. Screen recording is for pansies. You just go to Byte Tuner, you buy it, it comes with one license for a car, and that can be any DME you want. Uh, since I have an MS45, they're a bit more expensive. If I wanted to tune another one of these cars, it'd be $200 for a license. It's like $50 for an MS43 license, which is earlier E46s. 
everything that's pa compatible with here, you know, 41, 42, 43, 45, MSS 52, 4, and 54 HP. So that covers pretty much all of the 90s and early 2000s BMWs. It is pretty cool. Once you buy the software, you gotta go into the license manager, send him your customer ID and your hardware ID, and then he will send you back the license key for the software itself. And then you'll also have to do that again for the car specifically, tell it what DME it is, what chassis, and then uh, the, and you'll get a license for that too. And then, and the first step is going to be downloading the entire tune file from your car. Now this takes about 45 minutes, so you're going to want to have your laptop hooked up to power and you're going to want to put a float charger on the car itself because it is going to be key on while this is reading and if the read gets interrupted for whatever reason, it can brick your DME I believe. So uh, better safe than sorry, get, to get some power on everything when you do that. And then once it's done, you'll have a list of parameters over here that you can go through and uh, I definitely see why the MS45s cost more to get tunes and stuff for, because the amount of stuff in them is absolutely bananas. Like, all, you know, my, my Miata over there, over there, has like 100 tables or so. I think this thing has, like, just look at this uncategorized category. All, I'm gonna expand this a bit, there we go all these tables yeah the amount of stuff is absolutely bananas but for now all that i'm interested in is turning off my rear o2 sensors and the secondary air pump and fortunately there is another great online resource big shout out to ms4x.net it's a wiki about these siemens ms series uh, dmes and here at the bottom of the siemens I, I'm probably pronouncing this really wrong too, but the bo bottom of the MS45 page, it tells us exactly what we need to do to turn off the cat diagnostics, uh, remove the sensors entirely, keep it from triggering the service engine soon light. You can also supposedly force catalyst readiness for like uh, uh, emissions te testing states that just do the OBD2 and don't really like look under the car. Uh, we don't have any kind of inspections here in Kansas, so it's all good. And also how to turn off the secondary air pump. And really, all you got to do here is, uh, you know, this says turn off the manual deactivation of cat diagnosis, inhibit condition to one. So I'm just going to copy that nonsense there, go back into Byte Tuner. I'm just going to paste that into the parameters, hit enter, and it highlights it. Quite nice, just a quick double click and it pulls it up and this is a uh, just a binary zero one switch. Uh, I've already set it to one and it's good to go. So once you've gone through this list and I'm going to link to this page in the description, I'm also going to link to bike tuner in the description. So once you go through this list, changing everything you need to in your tune file, save as and make sure that you save your stock tune somewhere and then back it up to OneDrive and then back it up to Google Drive and then back it up to iCloud Drive and then back it up to Dropbox then we'll save as and just name it like E46 cat SAP delete or something like that. And then we're gonna go plug the lappy toppy in to the car itself. So to make laptop talk to car, you're gonna need one of these uh, K plus D can input cables. And generally you'll, <laughs> Don't get this one. This one doesn't have a switch on it. Generally, you'll want one with a switch on it that can switch between the newer and older styles of communication. This one was set for the newer style of communication and it doesn't have a switch. So I had to go in and solder, I think these two pins right here. Uh, I'm, I'm not entire, I don't quite remember. It's been a hot minute since I did it. We've got a solder bridge, two pins together, and then you'll be able to read and write to these older BMWs. But we're just gonna take that to plug it right on in. And then of course the other side goes the laptop. Okay, so now we're in the car and I'm having a really hard time um, holding the camera so that I can actually show stuff. And as we see, if we go down here and hit refresh, OBD2 is now connected. Uh, and I do have the key on in the accessory position, but not actually started. So now if we hit upload, it is going to upload that tune to the car. And already, I already did it, so I'm not gonna do it again, but when you're done, you'll need to cycle the power off and then back on again before you attempt to start the car or you'll get all kinds of check engine lights. Something else you'll wanna do that's really neat here, and I am gonna do this right now, is you can reset your adaptations. Now you can do all of them and make sure that once after you redo all of them, turn the car off, 
start the car, let it idle for a minute, turn it back off, then go back to accessory mode and clear your um, DTCs, which you can also do here. You can read and clear your DTCs. So I am going to clear my DTCs since I just replaced that O2 sensor and I no longer have that issue. And then there we go, successfully cleared all DTCs from memory. I'm gonna to go to adapt. I'm going to clear my, let's see here. I think I wanna clear my Lambda and my learned variants uh, just because all I've, I, I already did this, I, I did this in the reverse order of how I'm filming it. I uh, tuned the car and then replaced the O2 sensor. So now that I've replaced the O2 sensor, I'm gonna clear my learned variants and my lambda and i believe that is everything relating to fueling and there we go successfully cleared so let's go ahead and turn the car off i'm gonna start it make sure i'm in neutral here ah that's not what i wanted at all okay i definitely have some uh body module DTCs to clear here. I bet if I read these, key off, back to accessory mode. Just gonna clear DTCs again. Successfully cleared, car off, car back on and start. There we go. It's a little happier now. Still have the weird uh, uh, traction control issue there, but I think that'll go away after a drive cycle. So now that the car is running, I kind of want to make sure that those O2 sensors are actually uh, playing nice. So I've go ahead and selected the Lambda actual values and the PreCat O2 sensor voltages. I'm going to go ahead and hit connect and this enables the data logging features in uh, Byte Tuner and the car just uh, smoothed out significantly because it's now having to self learn everything again. So it's going to run kind of goofy until it can figure itself back out. Mass airflow looks okay, and then my lambda values are matching now. They were way off from each other before, and now those are reading perfect. Of course, they haven't finished their heat up cycle yet, but that's looking a lot better. Time to go give this thing a couple drive cycles and see how it's doing. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't have seen it with my own three eyes. There is no check engine light on my 245,000-mile, 22-year-old BMW. How about that? And even better, if we go over here to my uh, fancy new head unit, full review coming later, look at that. 2.3 and 2.3% long-term fuel trims. Now, a long-term fuel trim is when the ECU, you know, every five minutes or so, it takes a look at how much differently the commanded air fuel ratio is to what it's reading through the O2 sensors, and then it applies a correction factor. And in BMWs, it also learns the correction factors for different uh, sort of different driving conditions, and those are sort of part of what the adaptations are that we cleared. So there's long-term fuel trims and those are like longer term fuel trims kind of. I'm, I'm probably explaining that completely wrong. So the short terms, those will bounce all over the place because those are just moment to moment and they're not, they don't quite update right and whatever. But the long term is kind of the important thing. And before I was getting like 4.5% long term on the front and then 11% on the rear. And anything more than a 10% long term fuel trim on a BMW for more than two drive cycles will throw an adaptation error and, uh, well, it won't throw an adaptation error, but it seems to put that into the adaptations. And once the adaptation has gotten larger than 10%, it throws a check engine light for a lean bank because the long term fuel trims on these were over 10% for like. 10 drive cycles, like a full week, before it finally committed them to memory and started throwing the code, and the code would come back instantly as soon as I cleared it. So now, no code, happy fuel trims, car runs, fantastic now. I mean, everything looks good here. MAF is reading a, a great amount at idle. It's like a 700 RPM idle, 3.3 grams a second it's uh it's pretty hot out here yeah 700 rpm so all these numbers look good and i think this thing is good to go and something else to think about is now that i have 
Yan tuning laptop back there and Renalevo Byte tuner, I can start to think about tuning this thing. Uh, the, the problem is like, unlike my uh, Miata over there, this has a frankly obscene amount of tables and it uses what's known as like a driver torque command uh, methodology of figuring out how much fuel to squirt. So instead of just saying, oh yes, the TPS is 80%, and the RPMs are this much, and O2 is this much, it says, okay, he wants 80% of the power, how do we give that to him? So it's, it's a lot more complicated. There's a lot of weird stuff with math scaling and things that'll have to do, but since this does have more free flowing exhaust, maybe there actually would be a benefit to doing some tuning. I don't know. We'll check back in on that in another episode, but for now, I am quite pleased because now I have well, a fixed BMW from a fuel delivery standpoint. I still have some stuff to do. There's always stuff to do. Look at it. It's a 20-year-old POS. There's always stuff to do to a hoopty like this. But this has been a battle since I got this car. There will be no more check engine lights, hopefully. I am super stoked about that. So... So check out the description where you can uh, buy Byte Tuner and the cable that I used. And also check out the wiki for these DMEs. There's a whole lot of useful information there if you want to do some learning. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.